What's up guys and gals and welcome to BB Vibes. I love talking all things BB NFTs, speculation, and of course the market. So wanted to bring you guys a quick video, uh, mainly just doing a quick price action update of what's happening in the BB market. So the top gainers, the top losers, and maybe a small handful of NFTs that I would recommend to either buy now or some of them that I would just keep an eye on, wait for them to retrace, and I think would be absolutely amazing opportunities to buy in. Um, and these are mostly NFTs that have not been pumped currently. I'm not a huge fan of like chasing the pump when something is pumping. I just let it be until it's done and it starts retracing and that's the time to buy it. That's just my personal uh, kind of like play style when it comes to uh, these NFTs and it seems to be doing well for me so far. Um, yeah, so looking at the, the top gainers now and this is economy.wiki, the link to the this website that has all this really amazing price action update and historical data and all that stuff is down in the description. It's in the description of every one of my videos. Uh, for the most part. Yeah, Alligator Loki has really taken off, uh, has gone up one grand, and that's just because there's so few listings up right now. There's only 24 listed right now, so I'm not sure if this is the true price of Alligator Loki at 2.6, or is this mostly just there's a lack of listings, and once it gets up to a certain point, people are just going to start incessantly undercutting each other. Not exactly sure, but regardless, at the end of the day, like it's, it's at 2.6. Um, right now, there's just so few editions of this. There's only 800. Um, I did mention in my last video with my recent like uh, ultra, ultra rare throg investment that I was potentially thinking about buying an alligator Loki. Um, I still, it might be a little out of my price range now, but I, I do think there will be a chance for it to retrace and get back to uh, a manageable price. Uh, man, amazing Spider-Man. Eris is a uh, Spider-Man Ultimate Animated, the secret rare. Absolutely ballistic. This thing has uh, basically doubled in price in the last 24 hours. I mean, it was at 35, now it's almost at 60, it's at 55,000 right now. Um, this thing is just the holy grail of holy grails um, at the end of the day. And there's just so few additions. I mean, there's only a thousand and it is a secret rare of the first appearance Spider-Man. Uh, it's animated and it's got the whole deal. And yeah, so <laughs> this is basically just completely gone out of hand. I'm actually I'm not going to spend too much time on all this. I'm just going to quickly go through this. So uh, Carmine Robin, that one's been increasing right now. But you guys are going to start to see the same trend, which is first appearance, typically season one, not always. Uh, you know, DC, Marvel, DC, Marvel. So as you can see here, so it's like we have, we have DC, DC, Marvel, 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 DC, Marvel. <laughs> uh, Marvel, Marvel, DC, DC. So it's, it's, it's usually the same, uh, you know, the, the same people. Uh, over and over and over again, or say the, the same IPs over and over again. Uh, Jim Lee Joker actually increased up to, it's now already at almost a grand. And I think right now people have just been accumulating so many gems. Um, people actually been trying to sell off stuff for 12 days of EV. Once that finished, tons of people had gems left over, including myself as to like what to buy. Um, a lot of people are now investing in a lot of the, the first appearance uh, DC and Marvel stuff, as you can see here. Um, I, I really think this is going to potentially continue until VV makes a big IP announcement uh, in the next few weeks. And uh, in the most recent AMA that Ecomi did do, they did say, hey, like kind of just keep an eye out over the next uh, month or so. We might, uh, like they said one or two months, we might drop a new uh, big name IP. So just kind of be ready for that. But in the meantime, people uh, with uh, tons of gems that either sold them off uh, during 12 days of VV or people that are just finally been introduced to the app to the first time and they're investing thousands of, of gems into the marketplace. This is the kind of the reaction, as you can see. It's pretty much almost exclusively um, DC and Marvel for the most part. Uh, let's see, Throg got a small bump. Uh, like I said before, I've been mostly uh, investing in like the ultra rare Throgs, but it does seem like the commons, um, or I should say the uncommon as well as like the rares have actually been picking up a bit. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the, the losers. And this is obviously extremely inflated just because we obviously had that market issue yesterday that a lot of the season two murmur cornos couldn't even be listed on the market. So there was a very, very small segment of the market, like literally less than a dozen people were able to post some of these uh, like per murmur corno. There's like less than a dozen listings for each one. So a lot of people put them for very exorbitant amounts uh, of money, like either in the thousands or like very high hundreds, even for some like the comments and stuff like that, which is why most of these on this list are going to be the season two or the series two, uh, Murma Cornos saying that they lost, you know, 300 gems, 300 gems, 400 gems. Like I, this is all inaccurate, not necessarily inaccurate, but it's just messed up because of the, the way the market was set up. Um, I did end up selling my shark bite for, uh, I believe 500 gems, which is basically right where it peaked at. And I had a relatively low mint number. It was a 408, but I was just kind of glad to sell it at that point because shortly after, I think right now, um, it's at about the 400 mark. So I think I got a good selling opportunity with that. 
Um, I did end up just keeping my Cerulean. It was just so inexpensive. Like I think right now it's at like 35 or something like that. Maybe I passed it up earlier, but it was just so inexpensive. Yeah, it's, it's at 30 gems right now. I think I'd rather just keep it. Uh, I think it just I think it's a it's one of the cooler looking um, remember Cornos. It is like see through as the horn and all that stuff. It does have the turtle on the side. So um, I end up just kind of keeping that. So we're gonna just go by all the remember Cornos. Um, for the most part. So Rise of uh, Ultraman, I think that one recently got pumped. Just again, I think the season one um, NFTs got a pump probably about a week ago. And I think right now people are just selling these off to kind of catch up with a lot of the blue chip um, NFTs for the most part. And I do think quite a few people are just selling these off right now, just consolidating their NFTs to start liquidate for gems and then invest into some of these uh, DC as well as Marvel things. There's I'm surprised. There's, I think there's just a lot of people just incessantly just chasing the pump, which is why I, I do think some of these Marvel and Disney NFTs are just, or uh, sorry, Marvel as well as DC NFTs are just continuing to pump because people are just selling off all their en other NFTs, liquidating it, and just chasing it. So it's it's only a matter of time. I've never been a huge fan of chasing the pump because you never know when you're going to chase it off of a cliff, basically. But um, yeah, so yeah, you're going to see a lot of Myrmacornos and Unicornos. Uh, Cat Bronson actually pumped extremely hard recently, and I think right now people are just taking their profits uh, for the most part. But yeah, it did peak at like five grand uh, just a couple days ago, and I think right now people have been just taking their profits uh, over the last three days or so. But like, yeah, no one saw Cat Bronson just completely taken off. So basically, from January sixth, he was at one point six, and then two days later, he's at five point two. Uh, that is, you know, quite literally tripling the price within two days, which is why this whole NFT space thing is, especially on Vivi, it's just a bit crazy. You just never know. It's, 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 it can be difficult to figure out which ones you should buy, which ones you should uh, sell at what time. It's, it can be very difficult. But um, yeah, anyway, so into my recommendations, that's done with the gain, like the top gainers and the top losers for the last uh, 24 hours. My first recommendation, so this is like a medium term hold. Like I said, I, none of these, as far as I know, I do. It's kind of weird because like my my recommendations for like medium term holds could either go short term, like these these could pump very quickly. Uh, I do think because basically they did talk about being able to remove festive items off of it specifically. They talked about it a bit in the AMA that like you might be able to remove some of the festive stuff off of like Deadpool. I do think this this is something that could happen with Groot. I do think Groot was kind of a two part thing. One was like there's just tons of editions of it. Uh, and two, it does have some of the festive looks, so some people just aren't a huge fan of that for the most part, but I still think it is at a very good price point. It's basically just, it's still below the box price. I do think this one was, I believe it was 40 gems, maybe 50 gems to buy, or it's right there. It says the store price is 40 gems. You guys can't see it because my uh, screen is blocked, but it was 40 gems, and like the common is still below box price. Same thing with the uncommon as well. Like the uncommon is still below box price, so... Um, kind of similar to Storm and Deadpool. Those have already pumped. People have already been buying into it. So like, I, again, I'm not a huge fan of chasing the pump. If you guys want to, you can. I do think Storm and Deadpool are still like undervalued even at their current price points. But if you do want to try and get to an NFT before it starts going up, I do think the Holiday Groots are very good. Um, not so much not so much about the rare. I'm not sure how much that can go up. But if we do see the common and uncommon go up, I mean, it just makes sense that the rare would go up right next to it. So I do think this is a pretty good uh, medium term hold that could end up being a short term or a long term thing. Um, and in my honest opinion, I do think all the holiday items, uh, even if they don't remove the, the cosmetic stuff that are on it, like within the next year, I do think next Christmas, all the old holiday items will just see a significant pump because it might just take that much time for the holiday items to mature. And they might be able to be and they and they might be their own FA like, oh, do you still have the first holiday group? Do you have the first holiday uh, this or that? Like, I do think that in a sense, as they release more uh, festive or like holiday related items that like having the first appearance of those NFTs that happen that first holiday could be a big deal. Uh, another one, a medium term hold. I do think these are really undervalued. I actually still have stamps that I paid at a higher price than what they are now. I'm still holding on to the stamps, but I still think that the fact that the uncommon as well as the, the common are still below 100 gems. Uh, I, I, th I still think they're very undervalued. As you can see that the, the total listings are going down, but the price is still under 100 gems. And just the fact that these stamps have actually touched, uh, like the Uncommon has actually touched uh, 120, 103, 128, 135, 135, 140. So just the fact that, that these things have 
um, history of actually touching these high points, like approaching like 130, 140. I do think that the fact that it's at 91 gems is pretty undervalued, especially for the uncommon. And if we even look at the, the like the total minted numbers, the common has less than 8,000 and the uncommon has less than 7,000. Like we do have uncommon and common NFTs that are um, like not first appearances either that still have like more mints than that and they're going for a higher value. And again, stamps are st still like a very, very big deal um, kind of just like in the collecting community as well. So as of right now, I do think these are undervalued. Again, none of this is like financial advice. I'm merely just trying to provide you guys alternative options as to what to look at other than what's currently pumping. So I do think the stamps are undervalued right now. And I do think, um, I think last I checked for, at least for the uncommon, they're only like on like that, uh, VV market website for the day of the dead child with the bow. Uh, I think there's like less than 10 listings before it jumps up to like 110 gems or something like that. So, I mean, this thing is just like probably like 10 or 15 listings away from basically going up like 20, 20 gems or like 20 bucks or so. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. Now, Slimer. So this one is currently getting pumped. Um, this is actually what I was going to recommend uh, probably like a week ago or so, but I just honestly just kind of forgot. I probably need to get better with like my note taking and all that. But um, I would wait for these to retrace. I don't think these is, this is obviously not a good point to buy right now. I mean, these are all peaking right now, whether it's the Ghost Trap or the Slimer. These are all peaking right now, but... I do think that the Ghostbusters NFTs are currently peaking just because there was that season one pump that happened last week. There's still a little bit of that left over, plus it's a first appearance and all that stuff. And these are actually pretty low mint numbers. Like if you look at the Ghost Trap, I mean, there's less than 2,000. There's less than 6,000 Slimers. There's less than 4,000 uh, of these Stay Puffed uh, Marshmallow Man like NFTs. So like, these are actually pretty low mints, which is another reason why I think that season one NFTs are uh, gonna do extremely well, like whether it's now or in the future, it's just because the mid numbers were so low. Because I do think Ecomi did mention that I, when it was when the when the platform was just that early, they just didn't have that many users, so the mid numbers were relatively low in the grand scheme of things. But overall, like like they're not gonna do another ghost trap, likely. You know, they might not do another Slimer, but with these low these uh, additions that are so low. I mean, I do think these could go up. So in my personal opinion, I would I would keep an eye on Slimer. I would keep an eye on Stay Puffed, Ghost Trap, uh, maybe even the Ecto ones as well. And just wait for them to retrace because in my personal opinion, um, once Slimer goes back down to like 110, I might buy in and get a couple Slimers myself and just hold on to it just because it is one of the more iconic Ghosts and Ghostbusters. Because um, right now it was at 138. Now it's at 134. Five and I think once it what once it does retrace or once the next big IP announcement or whatever VV is going to do to basically get people to finally sell off some of their um, bigger name NFTs or like their bigger IP NFTs, um, I do think like around one ten or so is a good price point to buy in because um, I don't think it's it's been two months since it's actually dipped down below one hundred. So one ten I think is a good point to pick it up. <clears throat> And again, for my and those all the previous ones I said were kind of like my medium to like potentially long term holds, more medium term holds. Long-term holds, um, I still think Steamboat Willie is like really, really undervalued. Uh, the comments, I do have one singular set. I won the all together now on the drop. Um, I actually ended up selling my happy, because I want two. I actually ended up selling my happy whistle at around like 700, maybe 800-ish, like kind of when it initially dropped. Uh, but I think just the fact that, I, I do realize there's a lot of mints on these, but just the fact that these are below 400 gems, um, these have been consolidating um, for quite some time now, and I do think there is going to be some room for it to pump here in the near future, um, especially like after the next big IP announcement. I mean, these could drop down a little bit further, but I, I do think it's a bit unlikely. But I think overall, just the all together now, as well as the jaunty jig and the happy whistle, I do think these these could pump um, in the near future. So this is definitely more of a longer term hold. So I do think that if you buy these now, a year from now, six months, however, whatever you considered. Uh, whatever you consider to be a long-term hold, I do think these will go up um, si pretty significantly uh, in the near future. Because again, these had, do have historical um, data of them actually touching prior price points of like 500 gems, um, 400 gems, things like that. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, I just wanted to kind of cover some of the um, price action that's been currently happening and some recommendations. Again, none of this is financial advice, but I, I do try to take some pride or at least do the most I can when it takes to like, hey, these are the things that, that are pumping. Literally every other content creator and their mother is talking about this and people on the market and Discord are talking about it. What are some things that are people not talking about currently and what are some things you can invest in either short, medium, or like long-term for the most part? But yeah, that's pretty much it. If there's any NFTs that you think I missed for the short, medium, or like long-term holds that are really you guys feel like are really undervalued right now that aren't pumping, let me know down in the comments below. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys take care. I'll catch you on the flip side.